For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome back to Around the World in 8 Minutes, where we at People's Dispatch are with you every week to bring you stories of people engaged in struggle across the world. For our first story, we take you to the United States, where mass protests have been taking place across the country following the brutal police murder of Dante Wright on Sunday, April 11th, in Brooklyn Center, outside the city of Minneapolis. A police officer shot and killed 20-year-old Dante Wright when he was in the car with his girlfriend. Wright was being apprehended for having a dangling air freshener, which police alleged was a traffic violation. The shooting occurred in the midst of high tensions in the Minneapolis area due to the ongoing trial of Derek Chauvin, one of the former police officers charged with the killing of George Floyd. Protests broke out in front of the Brooklyn Center Police Station demanding justice for Wright as well as Floyd and have continued to this day. The protests in Minneapolis and other cities such as Portland have been met with heavy police repression with some injured and several dozen arrested and detained. In the city of Chicago, anti-racist protests have also been raging following the release of body cam footage of the police shooting and killing 13-year-old Adam Toledo. The footage released by the Civilian Office of Police Accountability on Thursday, April 15th, showed the 13-year-old Adam Toledo unarmed being fired at while being chased by the police. Police had previously alleged that the 13-year-old boy was holding a gun and posed a threat, while the body cam footage clearly shows that he had his hands up and was unarmed when he was shot at. The release of the video footage from the scene was met with anger and protests by the residents of Chicago. In a press conference held by Toledo's family, Adina Weiss Ortiz, the lawyer representing the family, said that the videos speak for themselves. Adam, during the last seconds of his life, did not have a gun in his hand. The officer screamed at him, show me your hands. Adam complied and turned around. His hands were empty when he was shot at in the chest at the hands of the officer, Ortiz added. For our next story, we take you to Palestine, where United Nations experts on human rights have warned that attacks on Palestinians by extremist Israeli settlers in the occupied West Bank and occupied East Jerusalem have increased in the first three months of 2021. The group of experts also expressed grave concern at the heightened rate of settlement expansion in occupied Palestinian territories by the State of Israel. This leads to the forced displacement of thousands of Palestinians and the demolition of their homes. In a statement published on Wednesday, April 14th, on the website of the UN's Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, the experts said, already during the first three months of 2021, more than 210 settler violent incidents were recorded, with one Palestinian fatality. We call upon the Israeli military and police to investigate and prosecute these violent acts with vigor and resolve. According to the statement, the attacks are especially alarming because of the sense of impunity that the settlers reportedly enjoy from the Israeli military, which experts say deeply worries them. They added that in many cases, the Israeli military has not been present or nearby and has not taken sufficient steps to protect the Palestinians from this violence. This amounts to a discriminatory two-tier approach to military protection and policing in the West Bank. The experts cite one particular example this year of an attack on March 13th in the occupied West Bank city of Hebron, in which 10 Israeli settlers, some armed, attacked the Palestinian family of Saeed Awad, his wife, and their eight children, which resulted in injuries to the skull, jaws, legs to the couple, and caused extreme mental and emotional trauma to the children. The family was on its way to some property it owned to ensure that it had not been encroached upon by settlers. On the urgent issue of sustained and accelerated illegal settlement expansion, the three experts called upon the international community to impose meaningful costs on Israelis' protracted occupation and to demand that the occupying power 
halt its settlement enterprise immediately. Currently, close to half a million Israelis live in 250-odd illegal settlements in the West Bank. For our last story, we take you to Cuba, where the Communist Party of Cuba has begun its eighth Congress for the historical continuity of the Cuban Revolution. This Congress, taking place in the capital of Havana, is held amid a complex economic panorama, exacerbated on one hand by the COVID-19 pandemic and on the other by the intensification of the U.S. blockade. Among the most striking aspects of this party Congress is the departure from its leadership of several members of the so-called historical generation, such as Raul Castro, the current first secretary, and the entrance of new cadre into the leadership. Ahead of this Congress, the party delegates carried out sessions to study and analyze the documents that will be submitted for debate and evaluation in the commissions of the Congress between April 16th and April 19th. These documents are the result of a process of evaluation and consultation carried out by the party's provincial leadership bodies and the political and mass organizations of workers, peasants, youth and women during the year 2020. They address in detail how the actions approved in the 7th Congress have been implemented up until now and taking into account the current economic and social conditions, including the difficulties and challenges facing the nation today. Today, 56 years after its constitution and more than a century after the germination of its ideas, at a time when the country faces new economic and social challenges, with an attempt at destabilization encouraged from the outside and with uncertainty that always opens up the changes, no one should be fooled. The PCC is committed to preserving and strengthening the unity of its bases and that of the people around the revolution while renewing the faces that will lead the country in the coming years. That's all we have time for and keep watching People's Dispatch.